Good evening, Fellowship Church. How is everybody? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise God. I remember, I think at some point we're going to ask if anybody has a testimony tonight, so you be thinking about that. But just, uh, you can testify the Lord is good. Amen. He's always worthy of being praised. His kingdom reigns forever. It will never end. It's interesting in Psalm 2, I believe it's Psalm 2, the father says to the son, it's interesting, back in the Psalms they were talking father and son, and he says, sit at my right hand while I make your enemies a footstool under your feet. And Paul said, you know, we don't see everything under the Lord's control right now necessarily, but he's still in control, amen, he's still reigning. He's still reigning. We don't consider him slow concerning his promises. He's patient with us, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Amen. And he's willing to be patient and let things happen chaotically so that more can be saved, so that more can come into his kingdom. And so we rejoice, even though it's a little harder for us down here on earth, but that's okay, because God's got it all under control. So we could always lift up a song of praise, say blessing and honor. Blessing and honor, glory and power, they be into the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, they'll bow before the Ancient of Days. Say that again, blessing. Blessing and honor, glory and power, they be into the Ancient of Days. From every nation, all of creation, they'll bow before the Ancient of Days. And every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee will bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O oh God. And your kingdom will not pass away, O oh, ancient of days. Blessing and honor. All glory, all power, they be into the ancient of days. And from every nation, all of creation, they'll bow before the ancient of days. And every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee will bow at your throne in worship. You will be exalted, O oh God, and your kingdom will not pass away, O oh, ancient of days, O oh, ancient of days. We sing your kingdom shall reign over all the earth, we'll sing unto the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless worth. We'll sing it to the ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. We'll sing it to the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless worth. Sing it to the ancient of days every time. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee will bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O oh God. 
and your kingdom will not pass away, O oh, ancient of days. And every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory, every knee will bow at your throne, in worship you will be exalted, O oh God, and your kingdom will not pass away. Your kingdom will not pass away, O oh, ancient of days. Thank you, Lord. And lately in my worship, a lot of times I, I'm, I'm worshiping the Lord, and I'm also finding myself declaring God's praise and asking him to move and just show his power. It's what the world really needs right now. God's kingdom will reign forever. Let your spirit fall. Let your people call. Let the world know. Awesome is your power. Like chariots of fire. Like a rushing mighty wind. The heavens will tremble. Your kingdom will not end. Let your spirit fall. Let your people call, let the world know. Awesome is your power, like chariots of fire, like a rushing mighty wind. The heavens will tremble, your kingdom will not end. The Lord in heaven reigns, his army is marching strong rain in the world rain in the nations rain in your people as we come together rain in my heart rain in my soul rain in me your holy fire rain in me Let the church rejoice, proclaiming the cross, denying ourselves, saving the lost. Never looking back till that coming day, our hands to the plow, going all the way. Yeah, the Lord in heaven reigns, no, he does. His army is marching strong, reign in the world, reign in the nations, reign in your people as we come together. Reign in my heart, Lord, reign in my soul, reign in me, your holy fire, reign in the world, reign in the nations reign in your people as we come together reign in my heart reign in my soul reign in me your holy fire reign in me reign in my heart Reign in my soul, reign in me, your holy fire. Reign in my heart, reign in my soul, reign in me, your holy fire. Reign in me. Oh, 
more God. Come and manifest your lordship over, over all the earth. Oh, let it start right here, Lord. Let it start in our hearts right now. Reign in my heart, reign in my soul, reign in me, your holy fire. Rain in me. And every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee will bow at your throne. In worship, you will be exalted, O oh God. And your kingdom will not pass away. O oh, ancient of days. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why I keep singing that, Mark. I just want to keep singing that. <laughs> so your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Singing to the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless worth. For singing to the ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Oh Lord, singing to the ancient of days. None can compare to your matchless worth. Sing unto the ancient of days. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord. I think we're about ready for some prayer. But the Lord is good. Amen. And he is in control. Maybe it was five years ago. We used to have our Wednesday night service over to the auxiliary classrooms in the middle of the parking lot over here. It's been about five years. And one evening, Jim Farmer came and led a worship. And I said, Pastor Marvin, I said, this guy sings and plays pretty good. You ought to call him back sometime. That's back when Jim Bice Sr. would be in there. He'd be one of the first ones to show up. And we've lost a few besides John Jones and Stan Gaines. Things change. And we're moving on to where there's more of us have gone on ahead than those of us who are still behind. I think I can come out of this jacket now. I walked in the room a half hour ago and I... Oh, well, i got to run back out to the truck. Okay. So let's see. On the prayer list for myself is for my daughter, April. Oh, she went through that um, female surgery. It's been two weeks. Anyway, test came back. Everything's negative. We thank you and praise you for that, Lord. And she is much more at ease. But she is getting ready... After early next week, she is going to move out with my other daughter, Sammy, out in Front Royal. She's going to stay with her until I settle into a place out there. I'm in the process of closing down my parents' house, which is <clears throat> being sold to the highest bidder through my sister, Noelle, who's handling that. And I might have another four to six weeks before they push me out of there. And I'm amazed at the cost of the rents. Somebody, maybe it was Phil Donahue, was on one of the posts on Facebook, said they've gone up 30%, every bit of it. And one guy tried to scam me out of $80 for 
um, an application fee. And I thought, well, didn't they juice it? Don't, isn't 30 about the average fee? And he had lowered the, he had lowered the price on the internet on this particular three bedroom property from 1450 to 800. And I knew that because I looked up the property online and I saw it for a different price. Anyway, maybe that guy needs uh, some blessings and I'll forgive him for trying to, <laughs> to try to get some extra money out of me. <clears throat> so we're praying for April as she is adjusting to go into front royal, she's committed to helping Sammy with her two young boys, Bryson and Ezekiel, <clears throat> and I'm still, I've still got Marcus. So <clears throat> we're gonna be out there, a big group of us, helping each other out, and uh, I'll be running back and forth from front royal to the Capitol Beltway area to do my little handyman jobs but I've been running back at least two trips a week. Well, yeah, at least two trips a week um, for the last nine years. And that would be more, more often than that. But I'm thanking the Lord to provide. And uh, let's see. Pastor has added in two handwritten names, beginning with Jill Brady and one Joshua Beloshi. And I don't know if that's uh, confidential, but for, J but for Joshua Beloshi, sounds like he's in a predicament that he definitely needs a Lord, a Lord to pull him out from where he's gotten himself into, if he's at fault for getting himself into. I'm not sure about that either. But we do pray for Joshua Beloshi, and Lord, we pray your healing touch on him. And uh, we thank you for that. I look forward to hearing some testimony as to how God has answered that prayer. And I time to time ask for some encouraging testimonies we get up here every Wednesday night and we pray for 50 people and we just don't hear much feedback on who's got an answer prayer yes pastor I had three calls in the past week. he's got three calls in the past week well you gonna have to come up here once I said now because that that's a triple testimony So I better get on through this, this list so Pastor can come up for 90 minutes, 90 seconds. So let's jump into it with our prayer list, and we're thanking God for meeting the needs of all these people, starting with, all right, I'm going to be a little different. I'll start over with the second line, and then we'll switch back to the first line. Uh, Garnett Anderson and her son Brian, Terry Apperson, Ellsworth Baker, Dottie Bedell, Patty Berry and family, Debbie Biller. She's been having a rough go with this, uh, apparently with this chemotherapy. And she's been ha at it for a few years now. Lord, we do pray your continued strengthening of her spirit, body, and soul. Thank you for that. Carol Bowie, uh, Catherine Birch's sister, Donna, Harry and Roxanne Burgers, Doris Chesser, Marissa Crown, Dawn Agamoni, Agamoni, and Dur 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 I guess the D is silent. D, D Geronimo. Thank you for the help with that. Thank you, Lord, for your healing touch there. Cheryl Farr, I overheard Pastor say that Cheryl Farr started her, her new job today. Counseling at the Jude House. And what a wonderful blessing that is. So congratulations, Cheryl. Sheila Farmer, Yvonne Gibson, Mary Gibson, Jesse Gilroy, Penny Griffith, Dory Hardesty, <coughs> Tommy Harris, and his wife Lisa and their children. Dale Hay, Madeline Hoffer, Ed Horn, Tony Insko. Vince James, Glenn Jones, uh, Joseph, comma, Kelly and family, Doug King, Ginger, and A.J. Conagher, Carrie Langley, Earl and Nellie Lindor, let's see, Major, comma, I can't see the second name, it's a little bit misprint there, but it's Matthew and Jeffrey F. Uh, Ellen and Evan Mason, brother and sister, Carrie McClure, Denise, and Doug 
McElwee, Al and Mary Jane Mills, Mike Morris, Charles Newman and family, Eric and Jenny Olson, Terry Price, let's see, Maddie Andrenson, Caleb Bailey, Brandon Baldwin, uh, Carolyn Beeman, Gary and family, Jan Bice, Carol Bowie, Jill Brady, Dana Brown, Jacob Burke, Helen and Rusty Cooper, Denise Culberson, Ashley Enstrom, and her boys Aiden and Emery. Pastor, you will give us a testimony on those two boys, too. We ain't heard much about them. Faye Farmer, Curtis George, Bethany Gibson, comma, Rick, comma, Emily, comma, L, or Ellie, David Gilroy, Linda Grady, Joan and Steve, Joan Hall and Steve Hall Sr., Kimberly Harris, Jordan Hart and Baby, Christopher Hildalgo, Mary Hoffman, Joseph Houston, Sarah Eisenhart, Joey and Mary, Maria Jones and son Chuck Jones, Maddie Kelly, Robin Keyes, Margaret King, Stan Kacheski, Joe and Dixie, Cindy Levering, Ken and Lorraine Mahan, and I'm trying to think of this new young lady I've been writing to up there, and Jessup also is uh, Amanda McAdoo, 29 years young, and she's been up there to Jessup, I believe, nine years, and I don't know how much longer she's got to go. But anyway, Ken and Lorraine Mahan, the Melberg family, Jerry McC McClurry, no, it's McCauley, I'm sorry, Jerry McCauley, Carolyn McConkey, Bill McGonigal and children, Lau Moore, Jerry and Linda Muchel, Taylor Norris and Michelle Park, Mrs. Purdy, Emily Remo, Debbie Roberts, comma, Paul and Samantha, Stephen Russell, Eleanor Sayers, Ed Smith for his brother, Betty Stepp, Aiden Sweeney, Rejoice Teneriffe, Barb Tuttle, Jerry Waverling, Bob Wen, Robbie and Madison Williams, John Winborn, Andy and Carolyn Rander, Owen Riley, Brian and Brooklyn Roberts, comma, Tyler, the Santucci family, Melissa Seacrest, Kristen Stockman, T Tex and John, Lane Turner, <coughs> Glenda Verley's mother, Lilial, Geneva Wesley, Carla Whitley, Michelle Woodell, Crystal and Ariel Younger. And those in the military, we have Jacob Houston, Ashley Baldo, Anthony Baldo, Billy Heath, Aiden Corey, and Brandon Hardesty, Father, we do praise you. We give you honor and glory due unto you. And Lord, if we could just watch the wheels starting to turn as our prayers go up and come unto you. We thank you, Lord, for your wonderful power, your mercy, your faithfulness, for answering these prayers. We pray for your blessing on, I believe, Pastor's given the message tonight? Yeah. On Pastor Marvin as he presents the message. And then, Pay attention and make use of the lesson in our lives as we walk out of here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark, and thank you for giving us the pizza so faithfully every week. Can I get an amen? amen. And uh, uh, we are blessed to have Mark uh, coming from all over. open with a word of prayer, and uh, I'm thankful. I've had several calls over the last week uh, asking to get their names, people getting their names on the prayer list, because God answers prayer. Jill Brady, do you all know that name? Ray? Remember? Uh, Jill Brady, her, her kids were in the school. She... Uh, 
as the daughter of Bill Latimer. Yeah, she's been real sick and she's been in the hospital. In Georgia, there's only one doctor that could operate on her, whatever was wrong with her. And so she uh, said, I know that you all pray and God answers your prayers. So she wanted us to put her on the prayer list, which we did. And then another blessing that I, I did not know was what she watches on Wednesday. And then my uh, relative, uh, Brian uh, watches us. Uh, he's been watching us for years. Uh, and he's 31, and he really touched my heart with uh, his uh, testimony. What a blessing. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed tonight with you all here, and I also have my brother Joshua here who helps us on uh, Saturday morning at the Jude House, and I, I think uh, Mark mentioned my daughter Cheryl uh, has a master's degree in counseling, and today was the first day she's working at the Jude House. Amen. And I'm so excited for that. Uh, she'll, uh, I'm sure she was a little nervous, but uh, uh, she's excited about doing that. And uh, working with five women most of the day, and then teaching like 45 uh, men, she said today, two, two uh, classes. But anyway, Joshua, I asked him to come up and have a word of uh, prayer for us. Uh, he is a preacher, and he's an amazing preacher. And he, he said, but I want you all to see, that I want you to read the back of this shirt. <laughs> yeah. John 14, 6, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Reading will teach you how to pray. Praying will teach you how to love. Love is the key to salvation. That's pretty good, isn't it? Amen. I like that shirt. Go ahead and pray, brother. Thanks. Got it. Oh, righteous Father, we thank you so much for such a beautiful, blessed day. The, the weather out today is uh, just so great, Lord. We ask that you please bring the Holy Spirit upon us today to uh, fill this room, open up hearts and minds, let uh, our hearts and our minds stay through Christ Jesus. And as this uh, message is preached through Pastor Marvin, we just ask you, Lord, that it uh, comes from you with power and authority to continue to help guide us in our lives so that we can step boldly in, in the spirit to go out to be the ambassadors that you've called us to be. Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you for walking among us uh, your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to shed his blood on that cross for us and to be risen on the third day. What a beautiful blessing it is to be able to know what it means to be born again. For those that don't know quite yet, let it be well known to them today through the message, Lord, that you please bless the message and guide all these hearts that they be lifted up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> We're going to look at uh, harvest time and we're going to uh, go to Psalm 69, and uh, I want to read you this story. Does anybody remember the name General West Moreland? Uh, uh, a hero, of no doubt, in our military in years gone by. He once visited a platoon of paratroopers and back in Vietnam. During, during their conversation, the general asked a question, how do you like jumping out of planes? The first man said, I love it, sir. It is a fantastic experience. The next man said, I could not imagine not doing it, sir. The general looked to the third soldier, and this man said, I'm scared to death, sir. I don't much like it. And the general asked him, why do you jump? And the third man said, I enjoy being around the guys who enjoy doing it. Enthusiasm and zeal encourages others to do the difficult. Amen. When I think of street preaching, um, I had some friends that um, are in the ministry, ones with the Lord, but I'll never forget when I got saved and I got around these guys, we had a time. Uh, 
they, three of them rode in my car. I had to go to Virginia. And the first stop sign I came up to, or light, all three of them jumped out of the car. And they started witnessing and passing out tracks, and they were having, again, a time. And then uh, we got over to Virginia, and I had to go into a parts department. And the one guy was uh, witnessing to somebody out in front of the big glass doors of this showroom. And it tickled me because he was making a lot of hand motions like this, and everybody thought he was getting into a fight. And uh, he wasn't getting into a fight. He, was, he may have been getting into a fight because he was talking and bragging about Jesus. And, uh, and the third was a joy. And uh, I went into a, parts, I went into a uh, Department of Motor Vehicles in Virginia. And my three buddies went in there. And it was like church. Those three guys preached to everybody in there. And they had a captured audience. I mean, back over in those days, it was bumper to bumper, person to person to person. And they would go down each aisle, and they just, it was so much fun to be with them. So I love street preaching. Uh, moving on. Um, Psalm 69, verse 5 through 9. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel, because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. <clears throat> Verse 8, I have become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children, for the zeal of thy house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproached thee have fallen on me. David's zeal uh, caused some trouble among the ranks of God's people. Zeal is great when it's tempered and contained. Destructive when it is out of control. Zeal is a good thing and let us use it for good. I think of uh, some verses and from time going by, Jesus said, <clears throat> excuse me, I have come to seek and to save that which is lost. And then he said, as my father has sent me, so send I you. So he wants us to be a good witness for him. And uh, with the Holy Spirit uh, working and dwelling within us, <clears throat> the comforter we can. Zeal is contagious. Zeal means excited to praise, to have fervor, intense enthusiasm. I remember years ago, after Don and I first got saved, I met this elderly preacher. I mean, he was elderly. I don't know if you remember that, Donna, but what blessed my heart is he, get, he would get so excited preaching. And I mean, he would let you have it with both barrels. And he was so fast. It was just a joy. The zeal of that man touched my heart. <clears throat> a friend of mine, Andy Culp, Culp, was in the Army. He was an airborne ranger. As a testimony for the Lord, when it was time to jump out of an airplane, if it reminds me of Westmoreland there, Andy would jump up and run to the door of the plane. <clears throat> he didn't want anybody going before he did. As a testimony to the Lord, he wanted to be the first one out to excite and encourage those that were with him. Your zeal gives others confidence. Use your influence for God's glory. Point number one today, the commands concerning zeal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Revelation 3.19 says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. The word zealous means to be hot, 
God wants us to be on fire for him. I like Jeremiah 20, verse 9. I'm going to give you several verses. I hope I don't overdose you on verses tonight. Bring it on. Verse 9 of Jeremiah. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Have you ever felt like that? I'm just curious. You've been defeated. You're just not going to say anything. And he goes on to say, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire, uh, up, shut up in my bones. And I was weary and forbearing, and I could not stay. He had to tell people. I love that. Be zealous in staying right with God. Proverbs 23, 17 says, Let not your heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all day long. Titus tells us, chapter 2, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority, and let no man despise thee. These are great verses. Amen? Galatians 4.18. But it is good to be jealously affected, zealously affected, uh, in a good thing, and not only, he says, when I am present with you, Paul commands us to have zeal. You know, I think of football. It amazes me how excited these people can get over football, but not much in church. They wear these goofy costumes, and uh, and we get all... but. We need to get excited for the Lord Jesus. Uh, I remember, I've told you this before, John 3, 16, the curtain would come down, the banner, every time somebody would kick a field goal. And I, I had no idea that that was a Bible verse. I actually thought it was somebody playing football. And I said to my wife, I've never heard of a guy with a, the number 316. It's usually two numbers. <clears throat> but... Uh, I found out later, somebody was up on the stands praising the Lord, amen, and sharing the good news. And there's nothing like John 3.16 to get you excited, to get you with some, a little bit of zeal. I remember I was in my shop one day. I was not saved. And I was going through one of our rooms there with our paints and everything was stored. And I saw a newspaper. And I picked it up, and it was a sports page. And I couldn't believe it said, Dallas, 40, Redskins, like 19. And I thought to myself, I don't remember that game. I was really into football. I thought, I don't remember. This must have been more than a couple months ago. I was shocked. But then what really shocked me is when I went back through there again and I picked a paper up, and the paper was 40 years old. And I thought to myself, who in the world cares what the score was 40 years ago? And then I believe the Lord started playing on my mind, and I thought, well, you know what? Who really cares what the score was a month ago? Who really cares and loses sleep over what the score is going to be in the next playoffs? Oh, you know what I'm getting at? Uh, I was so upset that Dallas had beat my Redskins. First, 2 Timothy 4, Paul says, and by, I'm telling you, this is the nitty-gritty right here. Preach the word. Be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, 
do the work of an evangelist, make foolproof thy ministry, for I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7, I believe, gets to the nitty-gritty. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. That's really important, that line there. There were so many times in my life when I really didn't seem to have a purpose. But I know now the purpose is to spread the good news. Tell people about Jesus and what he's done for us. He goes on to say, I'm now ready to be offered up. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. <clears throat> what happens next? Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which I like right there, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me, Paul says, at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. I told Cheryl this morning, I said, I'm so excited for you to be working in a ministry. I said, you'll have purpose. And when I heard about all the people she's going to be ministering to, I was thrilled. She not only spoke to uh, the five ladies, but then she spoke to the 45 men, and then she spoke to, at the same time, spoke to 40 of the workers that were there. I thought, wow, this is, she's jumping into ministry whether she wants to or not. Can I get an amen? amen. Moving on. Uh, and it, on fire marine, Mark, you may remember this fellow. Eric Reed, he was a captain, and, and he was in the Marine Corps. Uh, he was in a tank division, and uh, he said, and he was on fire for the Lord. A, a zeal, this guy had it. He said, Marvin, I'm getting married next month. He said, I want you to preach at my wedding. He said, I want you to give an invitation at the wedding, and I said, hey, I'd like to do that. And he said, uh, uh, I'll never forget it. That was a beautiful wedding, by the way. And the uh, Marine was in his dress blues, and he cut the cake with that long sword. I mean, it was, it was cool. But, uh, but on the back row, all the way around the back, Donna was sitting back there. I love telling the story. Because there were 51 Marine lieutenants, all the way in, in, in parade rest, all the way around the back of this wedding. And my wife overheard one of them say to the other, did we come to a wedding or a funeral? That's funny, isn't it? I was telling them the gospel, the good news. And, uh, but what was amazing, Eric Reed called me after that, about four or five months after that. And he said, Pastor, you're not going to believe this. Those 51 lieutenants, that's right when uh, the uh, Operation Desert Storm was taking place and there was uh, up evil all over the world. He said, uh, those soldiers, those Marines, have been placed all over the world, many of them in battle. Can you imagine that? Three months before, they were chuckling because I was talking about the gospel and, uh, and the privilege that I had to do that. Point number one, the command of zeal. Point number two, the commitment of zeal. Zeal gives 100%. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Don't you like that? Let's do it. Joshua said, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side, excuse me, of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites 
and whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I remember when we first got saved, somebody gave me that uh, a gold uh, a little tr a plaque. And I remember going out front and nailing it on my front door. I was so proud of that track because I wanted us to serve the Lord. And we did. Amen. Colossians 3.23. By the way, um, I guess I jumped the gun on Steve Hall in the back because I never gave him my notebook to give him all the Bible verses. If you're seeing anything up there, that's because he's good at memorizing. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Thank you back there, Steve. Uh, <clears throat> give your best to the Lord. I remember coming in here one day uh, with the kids here, and a young boy came up to me and he said, Pastor, he said, I love these tracks in the, on the back wall. He said, I give them out every day. I said, you do? I said, that's great. And he said, have you seen this track? And he hands me one. I said, no. He said, read it. The kid's giving me a gospel track. And that was a blessing. Uh, and what a joy, him giving out the word of God. Amen? Amen. One Sunday, <clears throat> one Sunday, I pray. On page one of my notes, my heart is to encourage people, bottom line, encourage people. In bold letters, I write encouragement. Lord, do it with zeal. Give me some excitement and some Holy Spirit power. Zeal is willing to make some extra sacrifices to achieve, to achieve a goal. Lieutenant Glebe McClary, I love that preacher, was wounded several times in Vietnam. He was in a foxhole and someone threw a grenade in it. And he said one of his men jumped on that grenade hoping to spare the lives of, his, of him and his comrades. And, and he was killed, but uh, Lieutenant Glebe McClary said he was blown out of the hole and he said when he was on the way out of the hole, he was trying to find, grab his shotgun, and he realized his arm was missing. And then when he landed, uh, another shot came in and blew out one of his eyes. And he's actually preached here before, but he said he went to Korea. This has always touched me. He went to Korea to preach the gospel and have a revival. And he said when he got there, the Korean people were all praying 24-hour prayer meetings. They would go to work, they would come back home, and they would go to church all night and pray. And uh, he said what really touched him was this. He said, you know what they were praying for? Those poor Korean people were praying for revival in America. Revival in America. As you look at your life, what are you, a power or a problem? A promoter or a provoker? A quitter, a giver or a getter? A booster or a bucker? A soldier or a slacker? A worker or a worrier? A helper or a hinderer? Point number three, the concerns of godly people. A Christian with a godly zeal concerned with the growth, a Christian with a godly zeal is concerned for the growth of others. One of the joys as I look back over 47 years of being saved is my wife and I, one of the men at our first church who had a terminal illness, Roland Taylor, and his wife, this is 47 years ago, he had a terminal illness he and his wife are still alive. Is the Lord good or what? That was 47. He was antique then. He could have wore antiques back then. He's still alive, him and his wife, and, and they're doing good. Anyway, uh, 
Roland and Connie Taylor spent one and a half years every Tuesday night discipling Don and I. It was such a blessing. And when I look back, we had to memorize one Bible verse each week. And he was a clown, and I try to be a clown. You know what I'm saying, Ray? And Ray is my clown, my clown buddy right over here. Anyway, uh, he, uh, I would try to memorize the verses every week backwards. That took a little doing, but I, I suppose my goal to memorize a Bible verse backwards every week. That was fun. A little girl uh, uh, saw a sign in the church meeting hall, and she was crying. It read, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. A deacon asked her why she was crying, and she said, I'm afraid of the zeal. And he answered, don't worry, honey. There's no zeal in this place. That's funny. Godly zeal is not worried about the clock. I know a preacher, if you look at his bulletin, uh, he's been here before, Buchanan. Do you remember that name, Donna? A uh, uh, southern preacher. But when you look at his bulletin, it says, morning service, 10 o'clock until. Sunday evening service, 6 o'clock until. Wednesday night service, 6.30 until. In other words, he don't care when it ends. He's just going to preach. He's going to tell it like it is. That's a blessing. Amen? Godly zeal is not worried about the clock or the investment in a project. When I think of that, I think of uh, the four men in Luke, chapter 22, that broke up. They wanted to get their friend who had the palsy, they wanted to get him to Jesus. And the press, the people were pressing in. They couldn't get in. It was, I'm sure it was totally packed. And so what they did, they went up on the roof and they started tearing the roof up. And then they sent him down in a, 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 on a bed or something, a couch or something. They sent him down. And I'm sure when Jesus saw that, he was touched. Those men were not given up. Those men had a little bit of zeal in them. Can I get an amen? And what happened? Jesus, first of all, he saved them, forgave his sins, and then he raised him up. What a blessing. Uh, you know, they could have thought, well, you know, it's going to cost us $500 to fix that roof. Uh, they could have thought that, that couch, dropping it down however far that was, it might crack the couch but they were only worried about that man's soul. What a blessing. Uh, John 9, this, is, this verse sort of fits this me message a little bit. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man that was blind from his birth. And the disciples asked him, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he is born blind? You know, that's a neat question. Because Jesus said neither. So many people look to try to figure out reasons why something will happen to a loved one like this in this particular case. But Jesus said neither uh, hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God might be made manifest in him. Amen. Amen. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can work. Then Jesus healed him. Fourth point, we see the comprehension of zeal. Zeal comprehends that present, listen to this, opportunities may be gone tomorrow. That's so important. If you have a burden for a person don't wait. Go by and visit them or call them. Uh, it's amazing what will happen sometimes in 24 hours. Let's get excited about our lives. 
about what really matters. John 4, 35 says, Say ye not that there are four months, and then cometh the harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, look upon the fields, for they are white already to harvest. I like that verse. I don't know how many times I've heard people, even Christians, say, Oh, don't, I wouldn't even talk to him. It's, he's just too green. He's, it's just not time yet to talk to him. But God says people are all white already for harvest. It's harvest time. If any, listen, Jesus come back. We hear it all the time. But if you look around you, uh, the Lord will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah if he doesn't come back soon. Am I right? There's a lot going on in this world. I believe that a turning point could be in November with the uh, elections. I believe there's a lot of wicked things uh, taking place. A zealous person for Christ has a sense of urgency. A zealous person. Did I say jealous? jealous. I'm sorry if I did. A zealous person for Christ has a sense of urgency. Someone put it this way. Hey, it's harvest time. Wake up. Stand up. Sing up. Stay up. Preach up. Never give up. Pray up. Don't back up. Don't let up. Pay up or shut up until the cause of Christ in the church and in the world is built up. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. I'd like to ask this question. If you were to die tonight, are you 100% sure of heaven? Nobody looking around. Eyes are closed. Are you 100% sure of heaven? The Bible says that we all have a problem at sin. Every one of us are sinners. And the Bible says that as by one man sin entered into the world, that was Adam, and sin passed upon all men and women for that all have sinned. Every one of us are sinners. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift of God is eternal life. Separation, sin leaves us with separation from God forever, but the gift, this free gift, is eternal life. And the Bible says that we can have this gift. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you called on the Lord? Have you turned from your sins and turned to him and called on him and asked you to forgive him? Ask him to forgive you and save you. If you haven't, I'd like to lead you in a simple prayer for those of you out in YouTube uh, land. If you've never trusted Christ, pray a simple prayer like this. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Save my soul. I now trust you, Jesus, 100% to save me and take me to heaven someday. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying on that cross for me, shedding your blood for me there. In your name, I ask these things. Heads are bad, eyes are closed. No one's looking around. You've asked Jesus to save you tonight. Just slip your hand up. Will there be someone like that here tonight? Pastor, I've asked Jesus to save me tonight. I see that hand. Anybody else? Pastor, I've asked Jesus to save me tonight. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight and help us to uh, work on our zeal, to be bold and telling people what wonderful things you've done for us. In your name, Lord Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Uh, do you have a, a song for us? Come on up and sing us a song. Closes with a song. Hey, man, everybody. All right.
Cornelius, yes. The homeless guy that I saw from where I saw the blood was. And also the one that was on the church was on the one that was there. Uh, she had a heart failure and chest pain. And she was really just, she was crying and everything. And I tried to encourage her. And I told her that we're going to have a church pray for her. So just pray for those two people. Keep that in mind. If you're watching, let's make this thing real. Can I get an amen? Shake hands with somebody.